so in this video we are going to see how we can use change set processing in a full application programming model so this change set processing is not specific to a full but uh, it's a common uh, ui annotation which you can use in normal fury application as well but in this video we will be seeing it in context with the restful application programming model this change set processing is uh, like when you want to perform a certain operation on multiple records at once then you can use this change set processing it can be achieved using hash change set change underscore set and uh, what exactly it does is it triggers the same action multiple times on multiple in instances and everything is grouped together so for example if you have a table and you have multiple records you want to perform or you for example you want to update the status for all of the record at once you select the multiple records and click on one button it will trigger one action and it will update all of the record at once so this action will be triggered multiple times behind the scene for multiple instances means multiple records and this process will be all grouped together so this is how this works and uh, this change set hash change set can be used with invocation grouping this is the property which where we need to set the value with hash change set and uh, this invocation grouping property can be used with all of these ui annotation you can use it on the line items you can use it with status info chart actions field grouping and identification page as well so this was the high level info what is chain set processing and how it works now let's see it practically how we can implement this in a vaporized full application programming model we will also create a fiori application once our service is ready with this chain set capability and uh, let's see how it looks so let's see how we can implement the chain set practically to save some time i have already created a new package here and uh, i have also created interface view and projection view along with that i also have created one table so let's go through it uh, i have created this database table zrap student which has uh, these many fields and uh, then i created one interface view which is a reading from this table and all of the fields i am reading here i also have created one projection view which is on the top of this interface view and added some annotation here after that i have created a metadata extension for this projection or consumption view created some ui line item identification for all of the fields here here i have created a facet for uh, identification page or the object page okay so now let's start the next step of uh, creating the behavior definition for interface view very first thing to create a behavior definition for interface view you right click on the interface view and create a new behavior definition we have already seen all of these concept in our previous videos i have full full video listing if you are first time visiting my channel please go through those videos for basic uh, information how restful application programming works here we will be creating this behavior definition it is always having one to one relationship and we are using the managed implementation type so click on next 
and uh, finish we got the behavior definition now let's update uh, some details on this behavior definition to make it work so very first thing which we need to do is we will be adding one alias here and uh, let's add a call it as student then lock master authorization master would be we are not using the instance authorization so let's change it to global and then e tag we are not using here we have one field in our table which is id field and uh, which is auto generate so let's make it read only field here so for that we will be using field and uh, numbering managed and i want to make it read only read only and which field it is this is id field so this is done now this field would be read only and uh, the next thing is uh, we need to map all of our fields which uh, needs to be displayed so for that we will be using mapping for and uh, our this is our interface name this is our interface name here for this one okay now we need to add all of the fields so let me add all the fields quickly and come back okay so i have added all of the fields field mapping here one more thing which we need to do is we need to add one action where uh, we will be clicking on that action or we will be triggering that action to update all of the selected record from the table or from the fiori application for that we let's add one action here the action can be added using action keyword and uh, provide the method name which we want to trigger and uh, that's it uh, this is what we need for now in our behavior definition so behavior definition is now done let's click on activate okay so our behavior definition is now active let's create a behavior definition for consumption view as well so right click on the consumption view and create a behavior definition again it will be one to one mapping create next and finish our consumption behavior definition is also ready let's give it again a name student and uh, activate so we have created a action here with status update this consumption is using that action here which is automatically gets added onto our projection now the next thing which we need to do is we need to create a service definition for this consumption view so right click on the consumption view and create a new service definition we got our reference here and uh, let's create z r a p expose underscore student 001 service definition for student copy this name and click on next next click service definition and finish so we got our service definition now we already got the consumption view name as well which we are exposing outside okay now let's activate it this is activated now the next thing which we need to do is we need to create a service binding here now to create the service binding let's click on right click on the service definition and click on new service binding here 
service binding name is zrp underscore ui underscore student 5001 and service binding for student and one thing we uh, needs to consider here is we will be creating o data v2 ui o data we are using v2 the reason behind is this uh, in this application we are not creating the draft version and uh, with the latest changes in the restful above application programming model if you use a v4 and you do not have the draft capability then create an edit button will not be visible okay so that's the reason we are using v2 here v2 ui binding type and uh, this is our name of service binding now click on next and finish so we have got our service binding as well here now let's activate it our service binding is now active but it is still not published yet so let's publish it by clicking on this button so now our service is active and uh, it is published this is the service url and this is our entity set main entity set let's select this and click on preview this is how the application looks like currently we have a search field and all of the table fields here we also have create and delete button click on go so we do not have any record currently but let's create one record for us so first name let's create the first name create the last name age the course computers course duration is 5 gender m and uh, date of birth click on create our record is now created here go back and see one record is visible here now currently this status says no let's create another record here first name one last name one electronics course duration is three i'm not setting the status here for any of the record because we will be updating this using the action click on create second record is created so these two lines we will be updating a status at once when we will be adding a new action button here so to add that action button let's go to go back to our uh, metadata extension file let's close all and uh, now open the metadata extension file this was our file and we have all of these annotations already available but the main annotation which we are looking here is uh, to add the grouping on the action so to add that let's add some more annotation on to the line items first annotation let's say label what you want that button to be labeled as so we will be showing update status the next property would be what kind of button so it would be type property type and uh, the type would be for action the next property which we need to set is data action what method you want to execute onto this button so our method name is status update which we have added on behavior definition file comma and this is the important uh, uh, property for which we are here 
which is invocation grouping is hash change set so this will be responsible to group all of the actions for each selected line item onto the table in fiori application so this is done that's it click on activate and uh, now we need to update this method with the core logic how to update all of the records so to update the core logic inside this method we already have got our class here and uh, this is the method which we have added in our behavior definition let's add some code here inside this method so very first thing which we need to do is we need to read the specific entity and uh, get all of the records which are available onto the front end so for that let's read read entities of z r a p underscore i underscore student and 5001 in local mode and what entity we are reading so entity is student this student which we have given the alias name and all fields with corresponding hash keys and now let's collect the result inside students variable So data will be collected and uh, if there is any failed occurrence then it would be inside the failed parameter so this read is complete now let's do some sorting first here so sort students by we have a status field available and make it descending now what we are going to do is whatever keys user will select we will be looping on those all of the records and then update the status so for that let's run a loop here loop at loop at students which is our result set here loop at students and assigning field symbol and field symbol name is mfs underscore student let's remove the space and then make it end loop now inside this we will be updating the status field so status would be updated with a map true so when all of the records are selected whichever records are selected for all those keys we are looping on those records and we are updating the status field with ABAP true now let's up uh, we have updated now let's modify this entity so we will be using modify entities of z r a p underscore i student 5001 in local mode and again the entity is student we will run update 
fields which field we want to update we want to update the status field with what corresponding students so this has been updated with true and now we are we are updating the status field with all of these true values here and uh, that's it so our status update method is done now let's activate it this is also done let's uh, go back to our service binding and uh, click on preview button see we got our new button here update status now click on go we got two records which we have created previously now select one and click on the status update so this field should get updated here with the value yes okay so this status got updated here it means our update status action is working properly but now one thing to notice here is we only have a radio button here which is single select so if i select this this will be gone if i select this this record will be unselected we need to convert this radio button to checkbox and uh, this is not possible as far as i know in the preview option you need to create a fiori application and then you need to make some changes in case you are using v2 service type okay so let's make it no again click on this record click on edit and uncheck this and save now it is again no let's create a fury application for this service and test our solution so to create a fury application using the service we are using business application studio let's create a new application new project from template select the fury application click on start we will be creating a fury element application and a list report and object page select this option click on next now our data source would be we will be connecting to a system which is above on cloud so select the option now behind the scene it is fetching all of the services which we have created and uh, meanwhile it's getting loaded let's get our service name here so the service name which will which should be created is this copy this name okay so now all of the service are loaded here let's search for our service paste the service name and see we got our service which is v2 o data v2 version select this and click on next now here we need to get the main entity and our main entity is this one which is consumption click on next provide the project name student status update let's keep all of other thing default and click on finish now it is creating our application it is installing the dependencies let's wait for a few seconds okay so our application is now fully generated and uh, check the status of application it is all green it means everything is good now let's click on the preview application here okay so our application is now running and uh, we got our button as well here 
Now let's click on go button. Uh, we got two different records and the status here. But still what I'm seeing here is it still has a radio button which is the case when you use a v2 version if you use a v4 version this will automatically be converted to checkbox here now to convert this to checkbox we need have we need to make some changes manifest.json file let's make those changes quickly so for that go to our business application studio open the project and uh, in the web app folder open the manifest.json file in manifest.json file you need to go all the way down where the pages are mentioned so this is the place pages and uh, to make radio button change with uh, checkboxes we need to add a new property here which would be filter settings and uh, when this property is done let's put a comma here and add a new property which says table settings and uh, we need to set the property value the property is multi select assign true this is the property which we need to set to change single select to multi select and this is only the case when you are using v2 service type this is not needed when you use v4 service type let's save this and close now this is auto loaded click on the tile and now click on go see we got the check boxes here click on this click on this both are selected now we need to update the record we need to update the status both are no currently let's click on update status and see multiple records got updated at once so this is how we can use change set processing in a restful application programming model and that's all for now in this video if you like the content please consider subscribing to my channel thank you